You got a smile. You're smiling. It's Monday morning. <coughs> After Monday afternoon. <laughs> yes, Sorry. Yes, I wonder where you go with that. <laughs> Wait, start the show over. <laughs> anyway, welcome to this episode of Lancaster <clears throat> Connects. We're off to a fantastic start. Try to keep this one on the rails. There's a little oh, did I, I see uh, what you did there. Little, I see little, what you did there. Little yeah, going yeah, for this yeah. episode. Uh but yeah, it's Monday. I'm happy. Eagles <laughs> won in fantastic fat. Well. Not so much fantastic fashion. It was a little, little got got a little dicey there. It was a fantastical roller coaster of emotions for me last night. Had me just up and down all night. But hey, happy for my team, the Philadelphia Eagles, to be six and zero. Uh, and going into a bye week, we get to rest up for the run to definitively put all the people who are questioning in their spot that we are the team to beat in this league. That's, you know, it doesn't matter who you face, going 6-0 and to start yeah, the season. I mean, it's a tough thing to do. Six wins, especially <clears throat> one of them being week one, um, in which the team who we beat last night also lost. That was their first loss. Um, but, hey, they're beating the commanders in the division, so they got that going for themselves. And uh, I guess they're happy to be third place. I know I'm happy they're in third place. So that's, that's that. Right. That's right. That's right. That's that. Even the Jets are winning games. You know this, yeah. Like, te- like it's, it, it, you know, in a way, I think it's cool because everybody has their reasons why they love their team. I'm obviously into my team. Um, you know, if you're a Jets fan, I'm happy for you. If you're a, who else is doing good this year? Um, I don't pay that much attention. The but, Dolphins were doing good. Yeah. They're kind of a little, eh. Um, it just evades me right now. Who else is doing pretty good? Um, Oh, anyway. well, the Giants weren't weren't expecting. Oh yeah, the Giants. Giants are five yeah, and one. Giants are five and one. I mean, that's why that game last night was so huge. They all three of them would have been five and one if the Cowboys won. Yeah, but well, they didn't. You know, we took up that banner. <clears throat> we took up that banner. We just solved that problem for everybody last night. That's right. That's um, right. You know, if you were a Philly fan in general, you had a great weekend. I mean, the Philadelphia yeah. Phillies mm-hmm. stole that series from the Braves. Friday, Saturday, my brothers and father were down there. Uh, Friday afternoon, they said it was as loud as they've ever heard of Philadelphia ballpark. They've been to a ton of games. Um, even a, uh, one of my brothers was at a World Series games in 2008. He said it was louder than that. Yeah. Just crazy environment. Friday they won. Saturday they won. So the Braves are golfing now. Braves are golfing, as are the Mets. So that's the other yeah. side of the Mets-Jets thing. Like if you're a Jets fan, you're probably a Mets fan. That's like yep. two go hand in hand. So you're crying about the Mets, but maybe yep. maybe, maybe happy about the Jets. Well, yep. Been a good good weekend for Philly, but it's been a good week for Lancaster. So Lancaster was voted best city in America. The best. By Wallet like, Hub. The yeah. best. It's official. number one. So that's a lot to be proud of. So round of applause for you, Lancaster. Pat on the back. So you know. does that make us the best podcast because we highlight Lancaster? That might, I mean. I think we need to just take that crown. And just yeah, just, just send it to Wallet Hub. Go here, here's, grab it. And we put it on. We've already done the research for you. Here are the best yep. podcasts in the land. Yeah, and Lancaster Connects is number one. Yeah, I think we're the only one doing it. But hey, that doesn't matter. <laughs> if anybody would challenge us, we'd take it out and go for it. So, so yeah, um, it's been a good weekend. Good, <clears throat> great week last week for the city, being yet again on a favorite list this time in the nation. And uh, we're trying to put some shine and uh, spotlight on the city. And on the county, we do that through this show. So you can participate in this show when you do. When you comment, you get the chance to win prizes. At the end of the show, uh, we uh, give out prizes: either the drinkware, less nor more cuddle drinkware, or a twenty-five dollar restaurant gift card. That is right. Andrew Hager is questioning or asking, verifying. Uh, 
where we really voted best city mm -hmm. in America. Mm -hmm. That is true. According to wallet hub. Um, <clears throat> I say that I don't know hundred percent who wallet hub is or isn't <laughs> next week. Wallet hub will like be in the news for some sort of let's hope. Yeah. Let's hope they don't come out next week for like something nefarious. And then here we are praising them. But anyway, yes, we were voted favorite city in America. And uh, I think that's good. Yep. I mean, we live in a great area. Uh, there is no doubt about that. So, and we, again, we try to highlight that with everybody we have on the show. So comment gets you in for the prizes. Andrew's um, in. Andrew's already in. Uh, Ethan is in, it looks like. That uh, that, that comment know. happened before the show started, so okay. I don't know. There we go. Uncle Uncle Ethan. Ethan's setting the record straight that he's an uncle to somebody. Well, congratulations, <laughs> Ethan. We're happy for you. If you're tuning in now, let us know what that's about. Um, but uh, you can catch this show, both audio and video. So audio, anywhere you listen to podcasts, we're on all of them, all the players. And then online, really anywhere you watch online video, if you just search Lancaster Connects, it's going to come up on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook. You'll find it, you know, on a number of different channels and platforms. We're on there. We're kind of a big deal. You can watch it on your Amazon player, which I think is kind of the, kind of cool. Yep. You know, yeah, uh, right there on your TV screen, right there on the TV, whatever. And also past episodes. This is episode sixty. Uh, I think our notes say fifty nine. I, I didn't change that. I think it's sixty seven. Hard to find episode good sixty seven, and of course you can watch all sixty six previous episodes at LancasterConnects.com slash episodes. I'll tell you what: if somebody <clears throat> watches all sixty six previous episodes, we'll like give you something really nice here in the store. <laughs> like, mattress? <laughs> yeah, like maybe a mattress, but you got to watch them all and like, <clears throat> somehow prove it. Well, I, I don't know how you would prove that. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe commenting back certain aspects of the Tom Fooler right, from each right, show. Right. I don't know. Maybe maybe Chris can clip together all of your our Eagles discussions and see how they they pan <laughs> out at the end of the year. Like you know, see see the ebb and flow, the roller coaster of emotion. Yep. Oh. Week to week. <laughs> That's a scary ride. <laughs> anyway, uh, our anniversary event is still going on all month long. Uh, October is always our anniversary month. Anniversary celebration includes. Free gifts, so you get, you get some amazing free gifts just with purchase. We didn't pump the price up to give you the gifts. You're just getting them. Nice little gifts that you could use for yourself. The holidays are right around the corner, so maybe you pass it along there as a re-gift, but not in the Seinfeld way No, no. where you re-gift the label maker. Uh, so we've got free gifts. We've got long-term financing, um, and... Uh, there, you get to sign, sleep, and dream for 36 months. So whatever you get that qualifies for that financing level, just on your approved credit, sign, sleep, and dream, and then pay the bill. We want you to pay the bill in the 36 months so that there's no other nightmares of interest or penalties. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, we've got that going on. We've got double deals going on. And we've really got some exciting product here. And we're going to make the product look even nicer. Tomorrow is going to be... A really exciting day. It is. And we had the paint project a, f a few months ago. Store looks fantastic. Uh, people that we know that know the store past, they've come in. We had a, a friend come in th this morning and said, man, the store looks great. Well, tomorrow, after tomorrow, is going to look even better. We've got uh, panel dividers coming to create a little bit more privacy between the beds. Yep. Um, but, you know, we have people lay down on beds, you know. It's, yeah, it's it, kind of. Some, it's, Maybe yeah. an uncomfortable experience. Well, We're going to yeah. make it more comfortable. I mean, it's, you know, look, if you're, if you're somebody who lays down and a busy Saturday, you know, one couple comes in and they're trying this mattress and another one couple comes in and trying this mattress. You lay back <laughs> and you look across at the person who's not your spouse and you're like, how you doing? <laughs> You know, that's a little, that's a little different. That's right? how you try, that's how you try out beds. Well, we, we've tried out beds together. We have. We, we, we've, we've had to test beds together. Mm -hmm. You know, this is. This is the thing. <laughs> Motion separation is important, so we got to know if it works That's or not. Right. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, um, yeah. So we're doing that again to give our customers a little better experience uh, here in the store. Always looking for these slight edge things. Said in a couple shows ago, we do Reader's Choice mattress things around here, and tomorrow there's going to be a whole lot of those things going on. Yep, it'll be exciting. It will, hundred percent, be exciting. So without too much further ado. We're right on time. We are on time. Yep. Look at us. We're at the back of that window. Patrick Morrison, welcome to the show. Ben, Jeff, hello. Good to see you. Oh, hello. Uh, so you are with the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania. Thank you for joining. 
I uh, having me. I love trains as a kid. Still have a train table I, in our basement. I, that's what I was thinking about when you know we we started getting the show together. Like as a kid, you love you know maybe trucks are your thing or trains, but like almost every little boy and maybe girl like they love trains. And you know at some point maybe you, you maybe grew out of trains, but Patrick, I don't think has grown out of trains, right? Is that right, Patrick? <laughs> no, we never we never fully do. <laughs> They're still right. with us. <clears throat> yep. So, so tell us more, what is the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania? What is it? Well, we are the state's, the Commonwealth's official railroad museum. So um, we get to tell stories um, and collect artifacts and objects that relate to Pennsylvania's railroads um, from the very beginning. And the funny thing is our, our history really hasn't ended. Railroads are still with us, so um, there's literally no end in sight for railroads, as far as I can see. So it's uh, almost 200 years of history here. So we're very excited to share it with folks. So, so why Lancaster? So, out of all the places you could possibly pick, or Pennsylvania could possibly pick to put a railroad or museum, why why is it in Lancaster? Well, it's actually an interesting story. I won't tell you the whole story it would take us two hours. Um, but basically back in the early 1960s, um, the Commonwealth had decided to build a, a railroad museum. At that point it was a rail transportation museum and they had, they had included other things like trolleys in it too. Um, so when the active legislature, which created the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania or what would eventually become the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania, was looking for locations. There were many cities and towns across Pennsylvania that all wanted the state to build the railroad museum there. Okay. Um, but this location won out because, well, I think it was actually a very, a very smart and wise decision um, because it was already very, you know, this area was already very tourist um, sure. focused. There focused, were lots yeah. of people coming here from all over to see the Amish, um, to visit Lancaster County. Uh, but because across the road from us, we have the Strasburg Railroad, which is the oldest still operating short line railroad in the country. Um, is it really? And I also think too, because of uh, our proximity to uh, the Philadelphia and Columbia Railroad, which preceded the, the Pennsylvania Railroad. So to make a long story short, this area won because of, I believe certainly the, the influx of people already coming here in this in the 50s and 60s to Lancaster County to see all that Lancaster County had to offer at that time. And it was a very smart decision because today uh, we still get more than 100,000 visitors a year to this museum. Um, it's world class. Everybody knows who we are, knows where we are. Um, so I think it was a very wise decision to put it here. Yeah, yeah. Um... I'm glad it's here. It's always nice to have these amazing like community assets and, and state asset, I guess, here in your backyard. Yeah, absolutely. Like I took my kids there. It might be four or five years ago. And, you know, I've I've been on 741 past the museum. I don't know how many like hundreds of times living in Millersville, going back and forth. But like and I've I've seen the museum off to the side. And I'm like, oh, that looks cool. But I didn't really understand what was inside. I mean, obviously a railroad museum, but I was blown away when I went in uh, with my family um, at how, like you said, professional the dis displays were, the amount of stuff that's in there, the amount of education and interactiveness that there is. I didn't realize it was so big. And then you go outside and there's even more outside. Um, really, really cool. I, I didn't know that that existed in Lancaster. We get that a lot. We're, mm. we're, we're one of the best kept secrets and certainly in Lancaster County, if not the, the area. Um, but there's so much there's so much railroad history here and there's so many other railroad related track attractions nearby so this is really like coming to um to a disney world for for trains i mean it literally you can can't go too far without seeing another railroad related attraction so yeah, well, yeah. this is a good place to come and visit yeah um you know i'm reminded we uh my boys love to play monopoly at home with us and obviously we've got the reading railroad which is the next county over. <clears throat> um, any kind of uh, historical connection to Lancaster railroads or railroading, like in, what would you say that is pop culture, I guess? 
that's connected to Lancaster at all? Hmm. Well, sure. I mean, things were filmed here um, that are railroad related, even going back to, you know, Harrison Ford's uh, film Witness. Um, oh, cool. You know, and, and the railroad across the street from us, the Strasbourg Railroad, which is a good neighbor and partner, uh, they've had some some movie film footage done there. We've had some stuff done here over oh. the years, some smaller or very small productions here. Um, so there definitely is a, not only sort of a childhood, lifelong, if you will, interest in trains, um, people are just fascinated by this, this stuff and this history. Um, but people just, like you said, they, they come here and they're surprised how, how much there is here and yeah. all of the, um, the history that we have. Mm -hmm. And there are some things that obviously we don't have on display that are really cool. Um, that we get all the time or get things offered to us all the time. So, oh, so um, you've got like some back pocket off the show floor, off the show rail stuff. Can you share what one of those cool pieces is? Oh boy. Well, I mean, we have some really neat dining car china and silver. Um, we yeah. have drum heads <laughs> off uh, passenger, famous passenger trains. Um, we have, um, you name it. There's probably some some aspect of that particular thing that we might have. Um, you know, lots of um, we, have, we have a very impressive world class archives and library. People come here to do research from all over the world, and we send you know people order photos and we send them to folks all over the world. So um, wow, there's just so much here. We just got a. Um, we just received a, a movie script from the movie Unstoppable uh, that had uh, Chris, Chris Pine in it. Uh, okay. We got a script from that film um, not too long ago, which was pretty cool to see come in the mail. Um, so we get some interesting things. What would be, what's like the biggest discovery that you've made working there? I've made, oh my gosh. Um, I'm a really big fan of um world's fairs and we have many of our pieces here were displayed at various world's fairs and expositions across the country uh, most notably in new york and chicago 1893 um, in chicago and 1939 and 40 in new york and a lot of our pieces here have a have a history related to that and the john bull locomotive which is this little green locomotive you wouldn't think much of there's actually really cool, cool history here, cool um, stories related to that engine. Um, we have a locomotive that was featured in the movie version of the musical Hello, Dolly, that had Barbara Streisand in it. Uh, the train rolls into town and the locomotive on the front of that train is the locomotive we have here, number 1223, cool. uh, which I think is interesting, too. So um, we have some movie connections just like that. We have some... Um, uh, presidential co connections, including a train, a locomotive that pulled uh, Warren G. Harding's funeral train. Um, oh, wow. So you dig into these stories and you find out some really cool stuff. Um, we've had people come here to, to um, um, you know, to find out about our ghost, any ghost stories that might be associated. Oh, with yeah. 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 Well, Halloween time, right? So, our, <laughs> yeah. so do we have any cool ghost stories that we can tell? Um, I don't have any specifics that I can tell, but I, I can tell you that people have, people believe they've seen things, you know, here. Um, and it, it's kind of hard to imagine that that's not a possibility with thousands upon thousands of people who rode in these trains. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yep. So. Yeah, so we've got a question, yeah. uh, Andrew. Um, so he's asking your thoughts on upgrading steam and diesel to more eco-friendly, such as switching to renewables or uh, GPCS fireboxes, which I'm hoping you know what those are because I have no clue. <laughs> um, <clears throat> any thoughts there on that? Yeah, um, I, I definitely think that that's the direction they seem to be going and we hope to keep pushing them to do that even more. Um, you know, as it stands, a locomotive, you know, takes so many tractor trailers off the road because you have one locomotive or two locomotives or up to four locomotives pulling 100 cars 150 cars so you maximize the and reduce the number of tractor trailers on the highway so in a way they're already 
more eco-friendly than a lot of other forms of transportation, but the locomotives themselves could get better, could improve more uh, to meet um, all of our uh, clean energy land, um, milestones, if you will. So, yeah. yeah, I think we should keep pushing them to do that. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things, not to go, we'll make a little left turn and then we can come <laughs> back to what we discussed in our pre-show. You're taking it off the rails a little bit. <laughs> I said I wasn't going to do that, and here we go. Um, yeah, I think one of the things, as great of a rail network as we have, I think my perception is it was largely built on expansion as opposed to support of what was expanded into. Mm. Meaning, right. like, we don't have a lot of spurs off of the hub to minimize, you know, like, so we, so we can move things from the East coast to the West coast and vice versa, but like getting it into those cities deeper with rail networks, as opposed to trucking it well past, let's say uh, a major hub, then we have to, or railing it past the major hub. Then we have to truck it back to, you know, the Baltimore's and the, you know, Philadelphia's and the, the DC's like, we just don't have that kind of uh, spread out rail network. Right. Is that a fair statement to kind of get yeah, get the goods yeah, closer to the know, destination? Right. You know, a, a railroad, it, a locomotive itself and a train itself doesn't offer door to door service. Right. You have to right. take the, the car off the train. You have to deliver it with a truck. So there's still that disadvantage that railroads have. Um, yep. And, you know, there was a time where a lot of railroads, especially in the late 60s, 70s and early 80s, where there was a lot of pulling back, ripping up, mm. um, rebuilding over top of old rail lines. And, and, you know, in the last, I would say the last two decades, maybe three, you've seen places starting to put back rail that have been ripped up already. So yep. there's been a little bit, little bit of retrenching um, that had to be done, um, literally and figuratively um to get us back but i will say freight railroads have never been more busy in our history they've been busier than ever um passenger railroad is passenger railroads um have had a little bit more of a struggle in this country but um certainly over the last couple of decades they've made a they've made a comeback and um you know it's a great way to yeah. travel still last week uh we had monica fort on she's a travel agent she was talking about some of the yep. travel agency work that she's done for charitable organizations like make a wish and she referenced it surprised me that you can uh, that you can book a travel agent trip on amtrak and i didn't like i've sure. always thought of amtrak as just a nicer way to get to philly or new york city not so much like a coast to coast vacation yeah. like through the mountains oh, no, which i guess is what you can do which yeah. is very cool people do that all the time um it seems to be more and more popular uh, we host, the Railroad Museum hosts some what we call rambles, um, which go to different locations and ride all their trains or experience mm. all their railroad-related attractions. And, and we've been working with um, um, AAA Central Penn for years. Yeah, there you go. Um, <clears throat> so some of these are very interesting places that you go. And I, I've been on a couple, and I have to say, uh, they put together a really good package. Um, to uh, get people out to experience these exotic destinations, some places that you might not think is an exotic destination ends up being pretty, pretty fascinating. Yeah, um, that's cool. We just got back from we did a ramble. One of our, our employees here did a ramble to uh, West Virginia. Um, did all the railroads in that particular region. Um, just some beautiful places, especially during fall <clears throat> foliage season. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's the only way to go for sure. My wife and I, we uh, were for our anniversary trip back in August. We were on the Jim, uh, the Jim Thorpe uh, up that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. The Lehigh Gorge that did that little run, which was very cool. And uh, I actually just made a note to I need to maybe she doesn't. I don't think she's watching today, but uh, secret her birthday's in December, and I know Christmas up there is pretty cool. So maybe we do. A little run uh, on the train from Reading up to Jim Thorpe. That could be fun. That but would be um, yeah, so what I mean, what are there? What what's there to do for families with your museum? When I say your museum, the um, 
the railroad museum here in Pennsylvania, the Museum of Patrick. <laughs> what can families do when they work. come to yes. when they come to visit your museum? Oh, there's so much to do here. Um, you know, we tell people, we always tell people the desk plan for at least an hour or two uh, mm. to enjoy your visit. But some people stay all day. Um, there, you know, not only do we have full size trains, and we have a just a, just over a hundred of them, hundred full full size locomotives, rail cars um, of all shapes and sizes. Um, but during the last, well, we started in 2015 with this project, but we have brand new exhibits uh, that we unveiled to the public just after we reopened from, uh, from, from COVID. Um, so we have brand new exhibits to show off. Oh, wow. And um, so we have a little bit of everything. Um, you're showing some images of Stewart Junction, which is our, where a lot of our hands-on exhibits started when that was built in 2000, but we've expanded. We basically turned that building inside out and took a lot of those interactive ideas and spread them throughout the museum. So we have a lot of interactives. I'm, I'm very proud of that, Every, the work that everybody's done to put those together. Um, you know, all kinds of interactive exhibits. Uh, we don't open everything that we have, but we do open some of our trains so people can go inside, like that one, a boxcar there. Um, that you can see inside and uh, just kind of imagine what they did on a, on a daily basis. That's and very that's, cool. That's like very uh, metaverse like. Yeah, yeah. Those are the virtual tours we have. Mm -hmm. We have virtual tours. I believe we have about 29 of them that we filmed. We actually have more than that that we filmed. Very neat. Most of them are, um, 29 of them are up on the website. Wow. Uh, so you can there go you see go. If you're, if you're looking for something interesting to do other than watch television take a walk back in time and check out the railroad Absolutely. right from home. Obviously yes. go, we want you to go, right? Cause that's important, but this is what a great little supplemental thing to add into the experience. That's cool. Yeah. And these aren't, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna I was say gonna like say these pictures we're looking at, these aren't replicas or these are the real things. These were on the rails. Real deal used. holy fields. Yeah, there you go. No, these are the real deal. Um, we That's filmed awesome. them for a couple of reasons. We filmed them so we could certainly uh, allow our visitors to use them. But some of these, some of these locomotives and cars, we can't get into physically safely because they're they're fragile. They're they're old. Um, they're delicate, um, or we've just restored them. So um, some of the pieces are a little bit more a um, little bit more delicate, but. This allows you to get up inside of them. Some are actually kind of hard to get into as well from an accessibility point of view. Um, so these virtual tours allow visitors to see places that you don't normally get to go. Um, yeah. Well, and I mean, if you're, you know, maybe if you have a disability, um, mobility issues, yeah. what, a, what a cool experience where you still get to take in some of this. Uh, maybe you can come to the museum and, and you're able to get around on the ground and kind of look up. But, you know, getting getting in would be difficult. What a neat experience. We're actually looking to do that here in the store, have a have the wow. store scanned. Uh, we've done it once. We then we decided to go and do this big remodel. And so I have to have the scan done mm -hmm. again. But uh, we're looking just as a little side reference. That's that's an experience we're looking to offer our customers. Um, but this is really cool. I like this. Yeah, I mean, we're hoping to add more of these. We have more trains and equipment that we would like to add more virtual tours to um, and more spaces, not just the yeah. trains themselves, but some of our, maybe some of our um, collection spaces as well um, because they're immensely popular. They're easy to use um, and they get you where most, most of us can't get to uh, very easily. Well, and I think one of the cool things with this is, I mean, I, I was reminded of this when I, looked at like the tool display there were like some hand tools that the mechanics would have used i think i think what's neat to especially share with kids is that this was equipment that was built to last but it took skill and a lot of knowledge to make it last and you know from an original engine or locomotive a lot of people spun off of that with different trades and different skills and they learned abilities and they might have learned how to tanker and reconfigure something for better performance or uh, improve improvements. Um, and you get to see that like in the flash, like you get to experience it. 
Yeah. And I think today kids are, you know, I think not just children, but I think a lot of our society is so used to more of a disposable manner of things. Whereas this is all, I mean, some of this equipment's a hundred plus years old, right? Sure. And much of what you're seeing is, is as it is, as it's displayed. Um, in, in some cases, I hate to say it, but in some cases, warts and all, because we do have equipment that, especially outside that is in need of restoration. It's something that we are in the process of working on. It just takes time, um, but you're seeing yeah. it as it is. And, uh, and it looks great. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about that restoration a little bit. So obviously it costs, you said time, but it costs a lot of money, I'm sure, to restore a locomotive um, and, and and create these these displays and, and virtual tours and whatnot. Um, I'm also aware of the Friends of the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania. Um, talk a little bit about them, and I'm sure that's where some of the funding conversation comes in. Sure. Yeah, they've been with us since 1983. They were chartered in 1983. So next year will be 40, 40 years for them. Um, so the Friends of the Railroad Museum really is our support organization, our fundraising organization. Um, they, they provide um, additional staffing for the museum above and beyond what the state provides. Um, and they allow us to um, sell memberships. So we have a membership program through the Friends of the Railroad Museum. We have sponsorship program through the Friends of the Railroad Museum. So really the Friends of the Railroad Museum is indispensable to what we do. Um, provides us with the, the additional support that we need to be able to not only restore equipment, preserve our trains, but also to educate the public about them. How many, um, so how many people are friends? <laughs> are there, are there, is it, like what, what's the size of that organization? Sure, we have, um, it, it varies, um, but we average between um, every year, between 1,600 and 1,700 memberships oh. So I would say, you know, most of those memberships are family memberships. So you might have yeah. five or 10 people, you know, somewhere in that range that, yeah. for some of the bigger families that we might have. So you're probably looking at more of a 5,000 to 6,000 people range. And they come from literally all over the country, if not the world in some cases. Mm -hmm. uh, we get people from, from all over who are members of the Friends. And, and what are the member benefits for the Friends of the Railroad? Well, the most obvious one is you get to you get free admission all year long um, for those of you who are included on that membership. So uh, free membership or free you know, access to the museum during the course of the years is the big one uh, that people use. So in just a couple of visits, um, you make back what you would have spent um, in admission, you know, buying a ticket. So that's the big one for sure. But there are other benefits as well. We have a lot of uh, events during the course of the year. Um, there are member discounts. There's a store discount uh, for our museum store. So, um, you know, I, I think it's one of the, the, the great ways to um, show your support of an, of an organization is to become a member of it. Yeah. Um, and certainly you get access to one of the, I think, arguably one of the best publications out there for trains, which is the Milepost, which is our our um, membership uh, magazine, which is beautiful, all color, um, lots of great stories, great research. Um, so we're very proud of that as well. Yeah, very good. Um, you know, the last handful of years with education, you know, people have turned to virtual education, hybrid education formats where, you know, coming out to a place like the museum, I would imagine is really beneficial as a, you know, an excursion and experience could dovetail into history, could dovetail into like trades and skills careers. Have you seen an uptick of people using the museum for educational purposes? I saw on the yeah, one page we had an education tab. Yeah, definitely. Um, certainly before COVID, we, we hosted, you know, dozens of field trips, uh, school groups, um, Boy Scout merit badge classes, outreach programs to libraries and schools and so forth. We actually went out to schools as well. 
um, during COVID, we, shut, we, like the rest of us, shifted gears and um, started developing a lot of virtual programs, some of which you can actually see on our YouTube channel, um, which we recorded a lot of those virtual programs that we did. During that time, we did like 50 virtual programs, more than 50. Wow. Um, I think it was close to 60 when it was all said and done. Um, and we'll still do those. Uh, we've, we've been back to doing in-person uh, school tours, in-person group visits, um, but we still have the capability of doing virtual uh, material, which has been a really good outlet for um, for what we do. And one of the in most interesting things that we did as a part of that was sort of when you showed the virtual tour, something very similar. People really loved the behind the scenes things that we did, mm -hmm. where we could go into some of our trains and, and tell a little bit more about how they worked what they did, how they function. So probably our most popular virtual programs were the behind the scenes tours. Oh, neat. Yeah, very neat. Hey, we've had an interesting question come in again from Andrew. Do you know Andrew by chance? Andrew I've heard Hager? the name, but perhaps we've crossed paths at one point. Okay. All right. Um, so Andrew asks, if money was no object, what steam locomotive rebuild or restoration project would you like to uh, pitch around if you could? Of our equipment? Of our trains, um, yeah. Well, probably the most popular one, the one that we get asked about all the time, and I would love to see this one done. And we do plan to do this. Is we have the first um, GG1 electric locomotive, the prototype of 139 of them that were built. It's called Old mm -hmm. Rivets. It's number 4800. That one is probably the most asked about, requested restoration project, and boy, would I love to be able to, um, uh, to, to make that happen. And we will, it's yeah. just a question of time and money. Yep. yep. Um, yep. now where's the inside of 4935? Yeah. So what, GG1. Is, so what is so special about that GG one, uh, locomotive? Well, it was the first one, it was a prototype. And when they built, built it, they were, um, they rushed to get a prototype in, into construction. And when they did, it was literally covered in rivets. The panels, the side panels were all riveted together. It had more or less a streamlined look to it, but it wasn't streamlined enough. Uh, when the Pensy um, executives saw the finished product, they, they had hoped that it had been a little bit more smoothed out and streamlined. So they brought in, they brought in an industrial designer by the name of Raymond Lowy. Raymond Lowy is a, a, a household name and industrial design circles. Mm, so cool. He designed things like the the, the appearance of the Studebaker uh, commanders, the the, the coke bottle, um, mm. you know, various other designs. The interior of Skylab space stations, and um, his his list of credits goes on and on and on. But he was brought in to take that forty eight hundred look, smooth it out, make it look a little bit more uh, streamlined, even though. Um, arguably credit for a lot of that could go to um, Donald Donner, who actually designed the shell of the engine, the original engine. Um, it, it wasn't streamlined enough for him either. Um, but the idea is that that's one engine that I think folks would really get excited about if, if we could get that one done. And now, was that in use? Was that used? It, it was run up until about 1979. So okay. it, was, yeah. it was built in 1934 and ran until late 1979. And it was the longest serving in service of all of them. Um, it retired from Conrail and um, came to us in Conrail blue. And uh, now it's black. Um, and we hope to uh, bring it to, we haven't decided which era we're going to represent with that. But uh, that, that's, a that's a cool cool thing so yeah from what you said 1939 to 73 so it had numerous paint jobs and numerous looks over that yeah, time period is that that's what you're saying? yeah 1934 to 1979 okay. um it had at least nine different paints okay that's maybe cool more mm. even little variations I'm, I'm 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 counting everything in the in the works yeah um Another yeah, big locomotive that we have that folks would like to see restored is the M1 and the K4, which are two Pennsylvania Railroad steam locomotives that are very, very popular. Um, the M1 is our biggest locomotive. It's huge. It's, it's, it's very lengthy. Um, 
it's a 482 and it's got a coast to coast or long haul tender, which makes it look like it's bigger than it really is. <clears throat> That's a locomotive people would really like to see restored too. And we'll get there <laughs> again. Yeah. You can only money. do so much. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got some upcoming events. Um, why don't you tell us about what's coming up? You've got something here this month on the 22nd, then a couple of events next month, and then in December. Yeah. We've got, um, you know, the fall is our, although their summer is the busiest you know, July and August, mm -hmm. especially um, our fall season tends to take a, another, you know, busy direction uh, starting in September and all the way through the holidays. So uh, next weekend, um, the 22nd of October, we have trains and treats. So we'll have various uh, locomotives and cars with, and exhibit areas with um, either a food related treat or a non food related treat that kids can pick up. They can come in in costume and uh, oh, that's cool treat so that's next weekend the 22nd of october um trains and troops is our uh veterans uh usually it's around veterans day every year it's usually the first weekend in november that one is november 5th and 6th uh we also have a 1940 swing dance that saturday night uh, which is november 5th um and then we have our home for the holidays uh events on december 3rd and 10th uh, we have a bunch of things planned for those two Saturdays. We've got our Christmas <clears throat> doctor parties, which we read uh, the Polar Express, and we oh, have some cool. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's it's a great event. Uh, we have a gingerbread cookie sale, um, both of those Saturdays. Um, which um, I should point out, a lot of these extra add-on type events, we will have tickets available on the Eventbrite site. Um, but if you're just coming to visit the museum, tickets are available for just the museum during regular hours um, at the door. But some of these extra things that we do, we have uh, an Eventbrite page, which folks can go to uh, to get tickets for things like the swing dance or uh, the gingerbread cookie sale or um, the Christmas with the conductor parties. So um, we have a lot, a lot coming up. It's, it's actually, a, a, I, I enjoy this time of year, even though we're busy. Um, I just enjoy um, the monthly events that we have in the yeah. fall. It's great. Well, they're cool ways to kind of extend the holiday season. You know, obviously there's a big focus on trick or treat night on the 30th or the 31st or the 29th, depending on what borough you live in, <laughs> but you get out the weekend before and, and take your kids for a neat experience. Mm -hmm. And, and learn something probably, right? Sure. Um, get to wear the costume a little extra, which I think the kids always like to do and get some extra treats and candy. And then if you're like the dad that I am, you dig in and you get first dibs, you take the dad tax out on the candy that you like <laughs> the, the bite most. Bite-sized Milky Ways. That's right, bite-sized <laughs> Milky Ways, best candy ever. Um, so yeah, a really great way to kind of extend the holiday season, take in a little more Christmas, uh, as opposed to just concentrating it all at the end of the month. Uh, really a lot of good fun events you have there. Now, if you're a member, um, do you, uh, does membership cover those events or are those events extra? Is there a discount if you're a member? Well, a lot of these events are the same price for everybody. Um, okay. But we, we try to get the word out to our members ahead of time about them. So they're aware so of membership them. has benefits. Membership does have benefits. Yes. Most of these are the, the price is the same for members and non-members. Um, but there are some things that come up that are, that, that members do have, um, a little bit of a discount as associated with, um, but really these are the, again, this place has a different feel during the holidays. It has a different feel in, at night. It has a different feel, um, you know, as you're walking around and certainly during the holidays with holiday music and, and things mm -hmm. in the background. This is a really neat place to be an interesting time of year to do it so yeah patrick you know it's awesome awesome museum you know, your passion comes through um you know like i said i enjoyed my, my time there um but the museum doesn't run by itself and it doesn't it's certainly not run just by patrick right you have an incredible organization there of people that that uh, support and work for the museum. And do you, do you also use volunteers? Talk a little bit about your, your organization there and, and who helps you put this yeah. museum on. Yeah, we do. We, we've been very, very fortunate over the years. 
as long as I've been here um, and longer, you know, in the almost 50 years, and we'll be 50, this museum will be 50 in 2025, uh, which is hard to believe. Um, it's happened so quickly. But ever since the very beginning, this has been, this has been volunteer, you know, largely volunteer driven in the sense that wow. we can't do what we do without the volunteers. We have a paid staff, obviously, <clears throat> which is very, very important. Um, and I, I love my staff here. They're wonderful. But I also love to have the volunteers that we have because they support everything we do. Um, you know, we wouldn't be able to get done what we do without them. Um, they preserve our trains. They help with that. They help with our, wow. our school tours and our day-to-day -day visitation. Uh, they do things behind the scenes. Um, so yeah, our volunteer core, it varies, but you know, anywhere from about 150 active volunteers to um, somewhere in the 180 volunteer wow. range. So it's a, it's a very sizable volunteer core. Um, and we couldn't do this without them, obviously. Yeah, and uh, on the screen there, what's a junior volunteer? What's that about? So we have um, for the for for kids who are under, he start he starts at fourteen, uh, age fourteen. Um, but it is there are certain requirements. Uh, we can't they can't work too long. There there are some set some set limits on on daily hours, weekly hours, and so forth. Um, but really, if you're a youngster and you're interested in um, you know, starting to, to, you know, not only get involved in helping our, our guests and helping our visitors, but starting to see where maybe you want to go in terms of your career direction. Mm -hmm. um, this is a good place to, to learn more about, about that. And, really you know, cool. when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, I would have loved an opportunity to work in a museum just to kind of see what it's about. So I was really interested in museums. I loved going there as a kid. Um, I had a lot of different interests when it comes to history. So um, it's, it's a way to really get some hands-on experience working in a museum or working with the public or giving tours or, um, you know, trying to see where perhaps your interests professionally lie. Um, so it's a good opportunity. Um, and we do have some junior volunteers amongst our core. We've always had it. We've always had some amongst our volunteer corps over the years. Yeah, very neat. Well, Andrew says he'd love to volunteer at the museum or the railroad, whichever comes first. So Andrew, I'd suggest you reach out Absolutely. and connect with Patrick. We put the we put the contact and phone number and there it is right on the site. So for those listening later, if you want to volunteer, it's 717-687-8628, extension 3009, 3009 or you email programs at rrmuseumpa.org to get linked up for volunteers. Um, obviously, if you wanna make donations, that's always welcome, right, Patrick? Absolutely. Uh, you can do donations, you can be a member. Um, we will be making a donation to the friends of the museum as well. So as for you joining us here on the show, because again, we always want to highlight great things in Lancaster. And if we can help support that as well, we'll do it. Um, we so, appreciate it very much. Yeah, you're welcome. So we have the giving page is up right now on the website, uh, which again is rrmuseumpa.org. Um, so what's next for the museum? What are the big well, goals Well, what's ahead? next? Well, we have a number of projects kind of waiting in the wings. Um, we have a roundhouse project that we hope to get off the ground in the next couple of years. Um, we've got, we're working on, I know this doesn't sound very exciting, but I think it's exciting. Uh, we've got an outdoor signage project. We're redoing all of our outdoor signage to make it look a little bit more inviting and, and kind of identify us more as a railroad museum from, from outside. Um, We've got a number of those kinds of projects. We're working, we continue to work on um, our steam locomotive collection. Uh, we've got some restoration projects, which are ongoing. So I think that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, are you gonna do anything for your 50th? You said your 50th is coming up in a, a few years? Yeah, in, in, a, in a couple of short years, 2025. Um, and I've been here for more than half of that, which I try not to think about too much, but um, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> a long time. Um, but no, we're, we're we're kind of behind the scenes, taking a look at that um, milestone and figuring out how to best 
how to best commemorate it. Um, you know, I was here for, you know, our 25th and our 30th. And so it's, uh, it's hard to believe it's, it's been that long, um, but it has been a wonderful ride for sure. That's awesome. Very good. Well, I think on that note, got our connection cocktail. I think we've got it. Yeah. Let's, um, let's get to know Patrick just a little bit more, kind of dig into what he likes most about Lancaster and around town. You want to start off? We should, we should first ask is, uh, are you, are you a Lancaster native? Uh, my family is. So okay. to make a long story short, um, I went to Millersville. I'm a Millersville graduate uh, back in the early 90s. So I've been here for about 30 years, a little more than 30 years now. My, my father was born in Lancaster, my grandfather, my great grandfather. So I, I am a, an adopted native Lancastrian, if you want to say that, for a long time Lancastrian, um, not a native myself. That's awesome. That's awesome. So uh, first question, uh, what is your favorite thing to do in Lancaster? Oh my gosh. Um, well, I like to, I like to run and bike. Um, but I also am a, am a, um, I'm a record record, uh, you know, vinyl record collector. So there are a lot of good record stores in the area, like oh, yeah, yeah. the others that I yep. like to frequent. Um, so I like to, you know, find places, um, where records are still being sold. Absolutely. Or into that's, the record stacks. That's awesome. That's, uh, you're the first person to say that, uh, as their favorite thing to do in Lakers. It's one of my favorite things to Ben's, do in Lakers. Ben's as excited <laughs> about records as I am the Eagles right now. <laughs> have you been up to, uh, Lit It's Music? Lit It's Music up there? I um, have. Ben, yes. he's got a nice, it's not the biggest shop in Lancaster, but run by one of the coolest guys. Um, sure. Like his shop up there. So that's cool. I do Thanks too. For it's very nice. I'm just over here listening to music on Spotify. <laughs> Boo. Uh, what's your favorite annual event you like to go to? Ah, oh boy. Um, well, we have rails and ales here at the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania, which I'm usually helping cool. at, but that's probably, I would say, my, my favorite rails event. Rails and ales. I like that. Rails and ales, yes. So that's, um, what does that look like? Do you bring local breweries in or, or what what is a rails and ales we do we bring in probably anywhere from 20 to 24 brewers from all over wow. the, the the southeast part of the state that's really cool. um, we have food trucks um so to me that's one of the one of the, the premier events here but i certainly think in lancaster i'm hoping that that um that folks really enjoy coming to that um and when when do you when do you hold that event it's in April every year. So we, we try to schedule it in April. It's April 1st in 2023. We try to schedule it. Um, no jokes, huh? Some What's that? No joking on April 1st. <laughs> no, no. It just so it just so happened that it worked out. Um, we were trying to avoid some other events and holidays. So um, this year it is April 1st. I, I'm serious. Um, Very good. But we're looking forward to it again. All right. So are you going to, you, is your, it's your turn. Sure, sure, sure. So uh, <laughs> let's say you have some friends and family from out of the area and you're bringing them into Lancaster. What part of Lancaster do you like to impart on them? Is there somewhere you like to take them or show them or do with them? Somebody that's not familiar with Lancaster. What, what do you like to highlight? Well, everybody likes to go to Hershey park, but, um, but I usually recommend this part of, of town, this part of the County. Okay, um, yeah. There's a lot of, People like to go antiquing or, you know, like to get um, anything Amish related. Um, this is certainly an area to go. Um, lots of shopping, people who like to shop, but also you still kind of feel like you're out in the country, um, which you are um, in many cases. So I think this part of the, the county is certainly one of the, That's um, true. the more interesting and pretty and, you know, got great views, um, you know. There's a lot of bread and bed and breakfast down that way yeah, and definitely. you've got the the miniature railroad museum i the name of it escapes uh my head well, there's the, the toy train Mu national toy train museum that's, there's a yep. choo-choo barn yep. the choo-choo barn uh, that's the one yep Strasburg railroad so you got a you got a lot of railroad attractions in the in the area yep yep yeah that's Very really cool. cool well oh we got the did you hear it <laughs> i heard the whistle yeah i, got it. I hear the train coming it's coming around the bend 
right outside my. Are office. you going to sing? <laughs> no, I'm not going to sing. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> not going to do it. Patrick, this has been fun. Really appreciate you spending time here on the show. Um, you want to check out all the events coming up. You got Trajan Treats on October 22nd, 1940 Swing Dance on November 5th. Trains and Troops, same weekend, 5th and 6th of November. And then Home for the Holidays, Christmas with the Conductors on December 3rd and the 10th. So two Saturdays in early December. So no reason to not get out there this fall. Lots of things to do. Um, thank you so much for joining us. And that's uh, at the uh, Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania, where all of that's at. And thanks for spending time with us today, Patrick. We really appreciate you. Well, thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Ben. And uh, it's been fun. Yep. yep. Thank you. So if you would like to be a guest on our show, highlighting a great uh, local venue like the, I keep wanting to say Reading Railroad, but that's not it. <laughs> You're thinking of the Monopoly. Uh, that was always my thing in Monopoly, yeah. get the railroads, man, and you, you start dominating. Just tax people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. $200, 200 every time you get all, all four of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, that's the way to do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 100%. But anyway, um, the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania. If you have a great venue like that or a charity or you know of a local hero, uh, I'd love the highlights of local heroes as we get into the holidays mm -hmm. who are doing good. Um, maybe they're getting coats for homeless people. Uh, maybe That's, they're maybe yep. they're arranging dinners at the holidays. I'd love to highlight somebody like that. We've got some spots open as we look to wrap up the year. So uh, reach out, LancasterConnects.com slash guest. That gets the process started and we'll get linked up and get you on the show. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, we highlight a lot of small business well, owners. We do good ones. I know. And we highlight a lot of nonprofits and charitable organizations. But yeah, we do, you do not have to be a business or in a business or run a nonprofit to be highlighted on this show. Um, there's a lot of helpers out there. Yeah. You know, people that are behind the scenes. They're not taking credit for anything. Um, and, uh, you know, I think those stories are great to highlight as well. Doesn't have to be a business. Yep. hundred percent. A lot of people behind the scenes helping out. People helping people. People helping people. Yes. Doing good work. Now not, someone like. Not creating human funds. Someone like George Costanza could never be highlighted on. No. So maybe talked about. That's on right. On Connects, but never highlighted. That's right. That's right. So one last reminder is we get the prize letter fired up as we look to wrap up the show. We do prizes on the show. Get your comments in. We got a whole bunch from Andrew. We got Steve coming in. We'll see what the prize later says who wins this time around. Uh, my sleep better tip. So uh, add this into your sleep routine, a warm up and a cool down routine. So obviously warm up in the morning, cool down routine in the evening. So whatever that is for you. Last night I was out for the game in my hot tub, which I hadn't been out for a long, long time. And I recalled just how nice it was. Um, and I forgot that I use that to help me sleep better. Now, last night wasn't the best example because I was so hyped up. But, uh, <laughs> boy, I came in from that. And I was very relaxed. And then the game started and then it was all out the window. Maybe but, you should watch the game from the tub. No, that would be terrible. I'd drop. I'd electrocute myself. I'd drop the phone or <laughs> drop the TV in or whatever. Um, it would be bad. <laughs> you watch a TV if you're dropping the TV in. <laughs> it would be bad. You'll find a way. Um, but anyway... Uh, adding in a cool down routine. So maybe that's reading a book that isn't too exciting, drinking some tea, some light stretching where you're not getting a heartbeat up. And then the same thing in the morning, a warm up routine. Um, so setting that alarm clock a little bit earlier, doing some stretching is always great. Maybe some breathing exercises. Those are tips to just really kind of help your sleep routine out, make you feel better throughout the day and night. If you want that and more, you can go to gardenersmattressandmore.com slash sleep dash better and we'll mail you out a copy of our Sleep Better book for free. Great tip. Great tip. You know, I noticed a theme in a couple of recent online reviews. So, And what's uh, that theme, Ben? Team. The theme? Oh, the theme is team. team. So <laughs> Timothy, uh, a few weeks ago, wrote, great experience, awesome sales team. Highly recommend for anyone looking for a great selection, no pressure, and extremely knowledgeable. And then uh, Miss Garber wrote, uh, after researching and talking to friends, I decided Gardner's Mattress was the place for us. Uh, I was above and beyond impressed with the customer service, knowledge, and quality of the mattresses I chose. Both men were equally helpful. Uh, I highly recommend to Gardner's for anyone looking for a family-owned business and mattresses that are made for comfort and to last. So, you know, there's a lot of people that come in and purchase the first visit. 
you know, they know what they're looking for. We help them, you know, navigate their sleep needs and make recommendations and they buy the first time. But that doesn't happen all the time. That's not, it's not, um, you know, we're not here to force people to buy and, and twist their arm. So often people need a second and maybe third visit to, to make a purchase like this. It's something we want them to take their time and invest in the right way, right? That's right. But not all of our sales staff works all the time, you know, uh, and sometimes you might get a second or even a third salesperson uh, when you come back. And, you know, a lot of times in the buying experience, doesn't matter what it is, you almost feel like you have to work with the first original person. And, you know, sometimes that's most effective and we try to make that happen as much as we can. But, you know, we strive to give the same experience and the same information and the same helpful customer service experience to everybody, yeah. um, no matter what visit it is. And our team works uh, unselfishly uh, you know, it doesn't matter who worked with them first or who worked with them second. The customer and their sleep needs of, are of most important to us and to them. So um, we don't get those types of reviews by chance. Right. Uh, so uh, kudos to our team. They work as a team. Um, I know there's a lot of sales teams out there who don't work as teams, and there's a lot of bickering and fighting, and they that's are, my sale. They and are no, that's my issue with the definition and, of team. Exactly. So uh, kudos to our team. And, you know, I just wanted to highlight yeah. them and, and uh, you know, they can, uh, the team can help you sleep better. That's right. Thank you to our team. And thanks to our customers for always working with us. We're always honored to earn your business, earn your trust to help you wake up happy and to sleep better. That's our goal. Our purpose <laughs> here is to help you unlock your true potential through better sleep. And that's what the team does. That's what we do. On that note, I think we're about wrapped up. We got the prize later to do, spin so it. let's spin that prize later. I mean, if you get one entry for each comment, Andrew should be the winner. But I don't think that's how right. the prize later works. It's not. <laughs> but he's the winner <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Andrew, that's the way it should go. Thank you for watching and thank you thanks for commenting. For, yeah, thanks for being a supporter. It was, we appreciate it, it. It's always nice to have commenters that are interactive with our guests and, and asking there, questions there was a comment about connecting with the hmm. susquehannock tribe i believe I that. yeah yeah um i would say to that andrew if you're still with us if you can make a warm introduction there to somebody that you might know that's always best um honestly when the mattress guys come and ask somebody to be on a show i think a lot of times if it's a cold intro people are like a little wary of what's going on um but if you could connect us to somebody with the Susquehannock tribe, if you know somebody there, that'd be, cool. that'd be great. And and that goes back to our guest thing. You know, maybe you're not a local hero. You don't work for a business that it would be somebody we want to highlight here on the show. Um, or you're not a charity, but you know somebody there again, make that warm introduction, uh, connect them to us. Um, that would be great. Um, you know who might be good there? Um, it's a dude with the uncharted Lancaster. I forget his name right now. Benson. Well, there's Benton and there's, um, uh, oh gosh, I can't think, it's terrible, so it's I can't think of his name. Uh, he, he's been on the show yeah, like Uncharted a year and a half ago, the Uncharted yeah. Lancaster. Um, I'm, I'm sure he's familiar with the Susquehanna tribe. Probably is. He could be a good, yep, there you go. good person to highlight there. See, and that would be one of those tests if you watched all the episodes. You would know. You would know who Uncharted Lancaster <laughs> I is. I should know. I can't. Ah! This episode <laughs> comes full circle. That's that. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next week on Lancaster Connects.